sort of feels like Father's Day in here, doesn't it? Um, you know, sometimes when I have a plan on Tuesday, when it actually comes to fruition on Sunday, you're like, I don't know if I should have done that. Um, I stand here as a man who loved his dad very deeply. Uh, my dad was not a perfect man by any stretch of the imagination, but um, when, you, when you grow up in a farm family and you work side by side by your dad for a long time, and then you actually, when you get to the age of 18 and then you go on to college and at, you know, at 22, 23 years of age, you have this choice. And the choice was presented before me where I could go out and do something. I could go make my own mark. I could do something different. And I tried that. But when it came down to it, after working for other men, after working in, a, in places and positions and stuff in which there was someone besides my dad that was my boss, I realized that I held my dad up to, um, on, I put him on a pedestal. He was a man who, uh, to this day, uh, no offense to any person in this room, uh, there, is not a, there is not a man that I know of who worked harder than my dad. There is not a man who I know of who uh, was more honest and had higher integrity standards than my dad. Um, he was just, he was a great man. And I, and I, for 20 years as an adult, I worked side by side with him every day. And um, I, I, I strive to be like him in many ways. He was not, though, necessarily the best example in faith. Uh, he, he uh, and I, to this day, I, I never really did find out, but he had, he had a break from the family. He, he and, he and, he and organized religion, uh, they, they took, a, they took a, they took a break from one another, uh, the majority of my lifetime. And so, um, in those areas, I, I, I don't have an example. I had to find an example from, from men elsewhere, how to, how to be a godly husband, how to be a godly father. And that's, that's part of being part of, that's one of the, the benefits, the advantages of being a part of a church family. Paul, as we're, we're, we're going to continue going through the book of Philippians, we're ready for chapter 3, and we'll be starting here in a minute with verse 15. But Paul, Paul is talking about um, what it means to be part of the family of God. And one of the things that he wants to, to make sure that they understand is that you're always going to have examples. There's going to be models in your life. And, and, and unfortunately, one of the challenges of, uh, of being a father or being a mother in, is that our kids, they, they watch everything we do. And so they, they, are going to, they are going to pick up some of the habits that we have for the good or for the bad. And, and some of those things are things that we, we have a choice in. We, we, need to, we need to actually sit down and choose, is this my path or is there a different path? And then there's other things that we... we and I, I think most of us have been there. When I was a child, when, no, I wasn't even a child. When I was in college, I didn't want to be my dad. I didn't want to go down the path he had went. Um, I was in college, and um, one of the paths I talk about growing up on a farm, but my dad, my dad was the 13th, number 13 employee for IBM. He put in 20 years with IBM, but left it all behind to go farm. He followed his passion. And you know what? It's weird, and it wasn't even planned. I spent about the same amount of time on the farm and left it to follow my passion, to follow the calling. So see, there's some things that happen, and you don't even plan them. You don't even see them. So you look back and go, huh, dang, Bud Holton showed up again. Bud Holton show. There is another way that Bud Holton shows up. One thing that he um, he he did he did have. Um, have you ever seen or heard or been that person that when you're working on something, sometimes it just works better if you throw the tools. <laughs> All right. Um, so I always thought growing up that throwing the tools was somewhere in the instructions. 
Um, so my dad did have, you know, some momentary losses of, of self-control, and uh, uh, mine shows up sometimes in parenting. Um, I will say things, and I will go, that is exactly what my dad would have said. I hate it when Bud Holton shows up in these moments, all right? So, like I said, there, there are no perfect examples, and I'm not trying to say that my dad was perfect, but he was a really awesome man. So Paul, writing uh, to the Philippians, his, his, uh, his spiritual sons and daughters, starting at uh, verse 15, says, All of us, then, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on such a point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already obtained. All right, so what he's saying is, it, it, this is reaching back. This is one letter. We've been going through it for weeks. And what, he, what he's saying is, all these things I've already talked to you about. Uh, one of the first things that I think we need to pull out of this is that he's been saying, we need to seek God. We need to seek God. Uh, just last week, he said, you know, I am an apostle. I have done all these things. I've met Jesus Christ, but I want to know him more. Forgetting everything that's behind, forgetting everything I've ever done as a Pharisee, forgetting all these positions and all of this fame and power that was at my hands, uh, in my fingertips, right there for me. I forget all of it. The only thing I want to do is know Jesus and know him to the fullest. The other thing that I, I think he wants us to remember is that we have to trust God. Uh, he, he says uh, there in that second verse that we put or read, um, and if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Uh, he's been promoting unity in the church family. And one of the ways that we show that we trust God is when we don't argue. When we just say, okay, all right, let's just, um, whichever side you're on, see, what you're going to say, I know this, but it's still, it's better than arguing, is, well, God will show them the right way. All right? Um, so trust God to show them their error. Trust God that he will make his will known. Uh, he's been saying no arguing. Do everything without arguing. That's a tough thing to do, but that's when, that's when we do that, when we're able to bite our tongue and, and to, to tender our, ourselves down and back away and say, okay, I'm going to trust you, God, that you have a plan. And the last one, he says there, only let us live up to what we have already obtained. Um, I, I, I use the word please God, that we are to please God. And this is, this is actually something that's fairly new in my own life. Uh, it came um, a few months ago in my own personal quiet time, reading through the scriptures. And, and I don't know that I really ever thought about the fact that we were created to please God. And so every day, um, we should actually try to, to our prayers and, and in, our, in our daily living, we should actually strive to please God. Um, we, we so often think about what he does for us, but sometimes we need to kind of reverse that and just, we, we need to try to, to live up to what we've already obtained. We need to try to please God. I mean, that's why we gather and we worship him. We're here to worship him. We're not, we're not even here this morning gathered for us. This is our opportunity to, to give back and to please him. And so I, I think Paul's trying to remind us, hey, you already know this much. Hey, live up to it. He's going to be really happy to see you walking in what you already know. Going on, verse 17, it says, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. When he says, join together and following my example, I, I think as a church, we need to think of it in this term. We need to grow together. 
We need to grow. We need to connect together as individuals, but we need to be growing up spiritually. He he is addressing that to those who are mature. I think that maturity is is the goal. Uh, we are to be disciples of Jesus Christ. He is. It's not a destination. We keep saying that. It, it's a direction. We're going to keep following Jesus as closely as we can. But Paul is saying that I. I am an example. In 1 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, verse 1, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. He, just last week we talked about, Paul says, I'm not perfect. I haven't obtained this, but I'm keeping on. I'm going to keep pressing on. But he brings us along with us. And that's what it means to be a disciple who makes disciples. See, we're, we're all on the journey. It's one really long journey. And there's going to be, everyone's at a different place. We need to be looking ahead at an example, someone that we love, someone that we trust, someone who we're saying, okay, that person, they're, they're walking and they've been walking with Jesus for a while. I, I kind of want to see what they do. And then there's going to be people who are actually looking at us and saying, well, that person, they've, they've been a Christian for a little while. They seem to know what's going on. They've, they've you know, I can see fruit in their life. And so, and that's one of the reasons as a church that we have dedicated ourselves uh, to multiply, to discipleship, to, to making sure that we are in an active relationship, discipling others or being discipled by others. Um, you know, that is the mission and vision of this church. We've put it right there on the, the papers for you to, to read those again, to, to be a part of that. Um, but it, we have a choice. What example are we going to follow? Paul's saying that there's, there are people in, uh, they're, they're, they're followers of Jesus Christ, but they want to they wanna lead you the wrong way. Yeah, watch out for those dogs. I saw no dogs this week. I'm very happy about that. Um, if you weren't here last week, the week before I got bit by a dog, that's why I love dogs on a normal basis. Uh, I just don't happen to like dogs right now. Um, but we have a, we have a choice. Um, I want to use this as an example. This is a, uh, we're going to say this is a link in a chain. And um, as you can tell, it's a very short chain. But for some of us, I, I've talked about my dad. I, I have the opportunity to say what a great man he was, but I, I said he did not lead our family in faith. And so I have no connection. I have no connection to my faith through my father. And so some of you, 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 have, you have a long history of your father was a, a Christian, your mother was a Christian, your, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, I mean, they may, have, they may have came over on the Mayflower as believers in Jesus Christ, and you just have this long history. You, you, you're, you're, you're linked to a history of believers. But see, some of us we're a first link. And, and it, it's a challenge, isn't it, to be in a first link, pulling us away from the traditions, the bad habits that we, we were shown as we were children or, or, or living differently than the world around us. We don't have that family. Even, you know, so Kat, you know, Kat, she, I, she, I'm a first link, Kat's a first link. We, we get married, now we got a couple of us, and we've got some kids now, and some of them are baptized believers, and so we're starting to build the chain. Since the day of Pentecost, the church has been building a family. So you can try to be a Christian on your own. You can try to be your own little family. Or you can get a hold and become part of the bigger family. 
You can join this family as, as a member of this church, a member of God's family that goes back generation after generation. And you know what's sad is that so many of us, um, we look at this chain and we see a ball and chain. We think that the church is restrictive, that it holds us back. And, but that's not, what, that's not what the scriptures say. It's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to give us freedom. Freedom to live a life of abundance. It is to give us people that will help us grow in our maturity, to help us see the right path. I am thankful for the church. The church rescued me. It rescued my, my family. It rescued our marriage. Um, I, I, I don't even understand how people are not a part of the family of God at the local church. I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. it. It's incomprehensible to me. It, it makes me go back to that verse about, I trust in God that he will show them. All right? But it wasn't always that way. We have, you know, there's always issues in the church and there's problems and we, you know, we're not perfect. This is not a perfect family. There is no such thing. If you're looking for the perfect church, keep looking. It's not here, but it's not there either. Anytime you put a bunch of us together, we're going to mess it up. But see, Paul goes on. He finishes where we are today with this. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his and his glorious bodies. I, I think context is very important for us to remember here. Uh, Paul's writing this to the people in Philippi. They're 800 miles away from Rome. They are a colony they are, but they are, these are the sons and daughters of Roman soldiers who, after they won that war, they decided, it's pretty here. I like it. And so, as Roman citizens, they stayed in Macedonia, near Philippi, and they created a little Roman colony. They still spoke Latin instead of Greek. They dressed as Romans instead of as Macedonians. And Paul's saying, but remember... But remember, you're not citizens of Macedonia. You're also, though, you're not citizens of Rome. You are citizens of heaven. Today is, or would be, Veterans Day. Be, a lot of churches, they'll be singing God Bless America, and, and we'll, uh, they'll be worshiping America. I, uh, speaking of my name, speaking of my dad, um, I am named after my dad's oldest brother who was killed uh, on the beach of Normandy. If you've ever driven through Greencastle and you see the buzz bomb, if you've ever seen the buzz bomb in Greencastle, Indiana, on there you can find my name. When my kids were little, I used to point it out and say, look, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, what? So, true story, I used to... They're, you know, my kids were gullible once. Now they all know more than their dad, they think. Um, but I have tremendous respect for our veterans. May we never forget what they've done. So now, I think we live in the greatest country in, a, in the world. But when our citizenship gets questioned, we are Christians first. I, that's who our allegiance should lie. Our allegiance lies not in the red, white, and the blue, but the red and white of the cross. Jesus Christ, he died for us. He's calling us home. And I think in the hustle and the bustle of our daily lives, we totally forget to be in eager anticipation for that day. For that day when we all go together as one big family heavenward. See, that, that is our citizenship. That's where we belong. This is not our home. This is not our home. 
It's our home right now, but it's not our home. <laughs> we are created and designed to live forever with Jesus in heaven. And, and when we look around our country and we see it, we see it burning and we see, we hear uh, of, of all the anger and, you know, thank God the election's over and we don't have to deal with that right now. Although some states, they still are, the election's continuing in some states. It is a mess. We live in a mess. We have people who are strung out on drugs. We have, we have addictions, and we have broken families, and we have divorce rates, and we have all of this stuff. And yes, it is horrible. Our bodies are breaking down. I mean, how many people are we praying for right now that have cancer? But you know what? This isn't our home. These are not our finished bodies. I already got mine picked out. It's going to be pretty awesome. <laughs> this is not our home we are citizens of heaven but you got to know Jesus to get there you have to know Jesus to get there he is coming back and if he doesn't come back before we die then we're going there that is where we're headed that's where we're going and see people he wants us all to go together so no matter how badly messed up this world is, no matter how badly messed up our neighbors are, no matter how badly messed up our family is, we need to make sure that they understand that God the Father loves them. And through the hope that we have with Jesus Christ, we can all go home together. Let's pray. Father God, oh man, Lord, we thank you so much for loving us. Lord, for some of us, uh, we're first links. Uh, we, we need the local church. We need men and women in our, in our lives to mentor us and help us, Lord. And so, Father, I'm thankful for every person in this room right now who is a first link. They are the first person in their family to, to know Jesus Christ. Who have, they've decided that they want to follow you. And Father, I just pray is that uh, as, as people come around them and people love on them, that they, they are, they're mentored, they are, they're, they're helped to become true, devoted, fully mature followers in Jesus. But Lord, we're all on this path. We're all on a journey. We all have a next step. And Father, all of it's pointing us home. Lord, I'm thankful for heaven. I'm thankful that this place is not our eternal home. But Lord, uh, I do thank you for our country. I thank you for our men and women who have served faithfully. And uh, Lord, may we never forget the sacrifices that they've made, their families have made. Um, but Lord, the ultimate sacrifice was Jesus. We thank you for what he's done for us so that we may all go home. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.